Happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back with part two of the transcript from October 18th, 2017 in Knoxville, Tennessee, where Hat J uh, presents her praise to C. Clifford Shirley Jr. and the rest of the U.S. Federal Court, District Court. We left off on page 17. So let's jump right in. Thanks for all the comments and the emails. You guys are wonderful. It's so great to have so many intelligent people aware and interested and uh, really focused on this entire experience that Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Randall K. Bean uh, have brought to our experience, or brought to our journeys. Alrighty, well, we left off with C. Clifford Shirley Jr. saying, Yes, that's the one I have in front of me. It's on page four. I'm just going to switch windows one more time. All right. Okay. So Heather says, all right, so that we're on the, so we're not on the one from yesterday. Judge says, no. Heather says, all right. C. Clifford says, so <clears throat> is that correct? You claim that we do not legally exist? So Heather replies, we actually, from what I understand and from the record, there was a declaration that of lack of jurisdiction of yourself, of Guyton, Mr. Guyton, who was at the time in front of me, as well as Cynthia Davidson and Anne Marie Sfalto. C. Clifford says, just... And Heather continues over the top of them. I have not received anything. And then she pauses. Judge says, I did not ask. Heather cuts him off, says, from you guys. Judge says, about Miss Davidson. I did not ask about Miss Svalto. I did not ask about Judge Guyton, did I? Uh, again, very adversarial here. Heather says, okay, to answer your question very specifically and particularly, judge says, yes. Heather continues, I have not received any documented evidence, sworn, validated, and verified by you that you exist, that you actually, excuse me, you exist as far as being a judge that supposedly works for the Eastern, excuse me, for Eastern Tennessee Eastern District of Tennessee for the United States. I haven't received any of that documentation from you. The record is void of it. Judge says, and do you think I have to give that to you? Heather says, yes, you do. And where is the legal authority for that? The judge asks. When I assert a declaration of lack of jurisdiction and existence as a legal entity to come in and have authority over me, the court says, if you were to claim I was a zebra, I would have to issue proof that I wasn't? Yeah, the... This is just really, really interesting, the kinds of things that the judge is saying here. Heather says, well, that's just a, uh, I'm not even sure whether the court is going to be humorous because you're obviously not a zebra. I see that you're a human being sitting there. I'm saying, what is your authority? What is your authorization? Because you have to be authorized. Judge says, were you here at my investiture? No, but when was your investiture? Judge says, if you had been, Heather says, when was your investiture? 
back 16 years ago. Heather says, okay, so whatever your investiture was, it was inside of the United States Corporation. It was terminated. It was foreclosed upon. Judge says, okay, so Heather cuts him off, says, so that's why I'm asking for everyone's authority, including yours. And Judge, you know, Judge Varlin, or the allegedness of that. I don't know. I need to see your authority, your identification, your authorization to actually do all this. I did not have that. Judge says, I'm just trying to be sure I'm reading this right is all. Did you claim we do not legally exist as judges? Heather says, I do not have any sworn, documented verification or validation that you legally exist and have the authority to hold this court or to that this court even exists because I've actually delivered proof to all of you, sworn, documented, verified, and validated proof that they do not exist. Wow. I'm going to read this part again because this is the body in a nutshell right here. I do not have any sworn documented verification or validation that you legally exist and have the authority to hold this court or to or that this court even exists because I've actually delivered proof to all of you sworn documented verified validated proof that they do not exist. You as a human being? Yes. You do. She's making very clear distinctions here between lines 12 and lines 18. Wow. Wow. That's a gut punch. Nice job. Judge says, what I'm looking for is yeses and nos. And then if you want to explain the yes or no, but you go straight off into some bizarre explanation and I never get an answer. <laughs> Again, he's throwing a temper tantrum here. This is really easy to see. He's hurting her testimony. He's saying, I'm looking for yeses and nos when I ask a question. And now he's assigning the label of bizarre explanation to this very clear nutshell that I just read to you that I was moved to read to you twice and highlight. So Heather's standing on her ground here and the judge is squirming. <laughs> wow, is he squirming. Heather says, well, I said I do not have any documentation. Judge says, I didn't ask you if you have any documentation. I don't have any documentation, so therefore, no, you don't. Judge says, okay, your position is we don't legally exist because you have no documentation. And what, talk, and what documentation would it take to convince you that I legally exist? Wow, we're going to get into some good stuff here. Heather says, a sworn with your signature and seal validation and verification by you sworn declaration that the United States first off exists, that it's lawful, that it's legal, and that you actually have the authority. And then I would need to see the authorization from the United States. <clears throat> Judge says, and then what would you do with all of that? <clears throat> Heather says, if everyone had it, we would have it. We don't. So 2012, 2013, all of this. Judge interrupts her. So really, all that is, Heather cuts him off. It would actually trump, wouldn't it? It would trump that 
declaration of facts and judgment that actually stands as a judgment as a matter of law under the Uniform Commercial Code. Judge says, well, first off, we can dispense with that. Filing a UCC financing statement does not translate into a judgment. Number one, that is contrary to the law. Number two, a UCC financing statement doesn't even have that potential. And number three, you have absolutely no legal basis for claiming it. Heather says, actually, I accept your statements as proof of either, number one, your ignorance, or, and judge cuts her off, that's fine. Heather continues, a collusion at this point. Wow, bam, she just got right up there to the point. <clears throat> so let's read what C. Clifford Shirley Jr. says. Well, first off, we can dispense with that. Filing a UCC financing statement does not translate into a judgment. Number one, that is contrary to the law. Number two, a UCC financing statement doesn't even have that potential. And number three, you have absolutely no legal basis for claiming it. And Heather's response is actually, I accept your statements as proof of either number one, your ignorance or, and I'm just skipping ahead and only reading what Heather says here, or a collusion at this point. And so the judge got in one that's fine in the middle of that and then continues well we'll get into that in just a second if I understand you <clears throat> or if I understand you also claim that we do not have authority or jurisdiction of this criminal action is that correct Heather says, I have no documentation that there's authority or jurisdiction over this action. So therefore, no, I do not have proof of that. Judge says, I understand you don't have proof of that. Heather says, if there is no proof of that, then my position is actually validated and verified here in this courtroom right now. You claim, or the judge is talking now, you claim that we do not have authority or jurisdiction of this action. True or false? He's asking for a yes, no question. Heather says, true. I've declared that since DC, meaning Washington DC, and I still have not been provided. If you had it, you'd show it. Judge says, and you claim that you do not have we do not have authority or jurisdiction over you or Mr. Bean. Heather says, I've declared that you don't have jurisdiction over me. According to the record, Mr. Bean has declared you don't have jurisdiction over him. And the burden of proof shifts to you and to Anne-Marie Svalto. Or to Anne Svalto, she pauses, Anne-Marie Svalto and Cynthia Davidson. Wow. Wow, she is cut and dry. I'm going to read that again. All right, what are we on page 22? Why is it highlighting so funny? Oh, I guess I'm not going to highlight it. I have declared that you don't have jurisdiction over me. According to the record, Mr. Bean has declared you don't have jurisdiction over him. And the burden of proof shifts to you and to Anne Svalto and Marie Svalto and Cynthia Davidson. Judge says, okay. Heather says, you have not met your burden. Wow. Bam. Just stating observations is what Heather is doing. If you watched my video on SAYOP, S-A-Y-O-P is the way it starts. That stands for self-author your own perception and it starts with direct observation, do, D-O. And what Heather is doing here is she is just citing a whole bunch of observations. And it's such a strong platform or foundation really to experience life from much less inside a courtroom 
because it's really hard to <clears throat> hard to argue. You you bring somebody right to the point of, hey, are you going to deny your own senses? All right. Judge continues, is it your burden <clears throat> that that is true only as to you and Mr. Bean, or is that true as to everyone? Wow. Wow. What, what, uh, what an interesting question. I, I don't know that that's really a great question for the judge to ask at this point, but uh, I'm glad he asked it. Heather says, that particular judgment which I gave you, which according under the Uniform Commercial Code and common law, judge interrupts her. No, my question. Heather says, it is absolutely a perfected judgment. So that means everyone in this room is no longer a citizen of a private corporation, nor are they an employee of a private corporation. Judge cuts her off. Okay, does. Heather continues, operating under the guise of government. So I'm going to give you Heather's uninterrupted testimony here. It is absolutely a perfected judgment so that, so that means everyone in this room is no longer a citizen of a private corporation, nor are they an employee of a private corporation operating under the guise of government. Wow. Wow, that's potent. Does that mean your position is that not only do Judge Varlin and I not have any authority or jurisdictions over you and Mr. Bean, but we don't have authority over anyone? Heather says, you know, can I just ask for a clarification here? Because it feels like I'm giving legal advice at this point. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, how confusing is this? Oh, man. <laughs> All right. The judge says, I'm not asking for legal advice. Ah. Uh, all right, Heather continues, I've made a declaration that nobody has authority or jurisdiction over me. At that point, judge says, right. Heather continues, the burden shifts to those that declare or assert that they do. Judge says, okay. Heather says, I haven't received that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Judge says, well, I'm asking you if your argument is limited to you. Heather says, I have no argument. I've made a declaration. There's a difference. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, there, there is a difference. Um, let me just go grab Black's Law Dictionary really quick. All right, we are back. Let's open up to declaration. All right. Well, D E N D E F Okay. Well, we got a whole bunch of different kinds of declarations that it's going to define, but on page 493 of Black's Law's Dictionary, 10th edition, declaration, it's a noun. In parentheses, it says 15C. I don't know what that means. I'll have to, I'll have to look at, up that later. Uh, number one, a formal statement, proclamation, or announcement, especially one embodied in an instrument. Uh, and then they say CF period affidavit. And then there's a whole bunch of different kinds of declarations. 
And now let's go look up what the legal definition of argument is. Okay, on page 128 of Black's Law Dictionary, 10th edition, argument, and in parentheses it says 14C, a little, a lowercase c. Uh, I'm not sure. Number one, a situation in which two or more persons expressly disagree and dispute one another's positions, often vehemently. Two, a statement that attempts to persuade by setting forth reasons why something is true or untrue, right or wrong, better or worse, etc., especially the remarks of counsel in analyzing and pointing out or repudiating a desired inference made for the assistance of a decision maker. Three, the act or process of attempting to persuade. See oral argument, opening statement, and closing arguments for more info. Okay, so that's what Black's Law has to say about the difference between uh, argument and declaration. There is a, quite a difference, as Heather points out. So the judge says, if your position is true only as to you, or is it true as to everyone in the courtroom and outside the courtroom? Heather says, my declaration, not position. Wow. Maybe we should look up the word position in Black's Law, find out what that's all about. Okay, O, P, all right, P, O, S. Hmm. Okay, on page 1,350, we have position. We're, we're under something else. Hmm. Okay, it just says the extent of a person's investment in a particular security or market. You know, above it, because the, it's the root of position is posit, and that is to presume true or to offer as true, to present as an ex explanation. Hmm, so it's really not very clear because it seems to show that position references their financial investment in a particular security or market. Hmm, and that wouldn't make sense and, and maybe that's... Uh, and maybe that's what Heather's pointing out, is that the word position doesn't make sense there. But it is my declaration, not position. I have corrected it to declaration, she says. Is everybody on this planet has been taken out of the employment and the citizenship or the ownership of private corporations operating under the guise of government? Wow. Yeah. So that's some good explanations. So Heather corrected it to declaration. She's declaring it, yeah. Judge says, okay, so if I understand that right, then anyone could commit a federal crime and we would not be able to prosecute them, correct? Heather's reply, again, these are, all goes to legal advice which we, you and I personally agreed I would not go into. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. This is amazing stuff, guys. Judge says, I'm not asking you for your legal advice. I'm asking you, is that part of your position? Because I'm trying to figure out how it works. So if it works as to you and it works as to everyone, Heather says, this court is a bank. It's just a bank teller, okay? Wow. Oh, wow. Judge says, okay. Heather continues, this court operates as a banking function. C. Clifford says, that's my, that's my point. If this court is just a bank teller, if this court has no jurisdiction, if this court doesn't exist, if this court has been foreclosed on, if all those things are true, then there is no authority in this court to sit in judgment of anybody who commits any criminal offense, correct? Wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a question to read in a transcript. Oh my goodness, We're, are we really doing this, guys? <laughs> Heather's response, every criminal offense that used to be in the United States Code, which used, I should say, is in the United States Code, which used to be enforceable, judge says, right? Heather continues, they are basically regulations on commerce, okay? On what, the judge asks? Heather says, my hope on commerce. Okay. <clears throat> That's what Congress has the unlimited power to do, is regulate commerce. Okay, replies the judge. Heather says, my entire last 20 years <clears throat> has been spent to making sure that people such as yourself, Anne Marie Sfalto and Cynthia Davidson could actually do what we believed we were doing. When I was a prosecutor, I went in there because I believed I was protecting the community. I was protecting that until I ended up at the highest levels of banking trade and finance before and the court reporter says, can you please slow down? <laughs> Judge says, I'm not interested. Yeah, let's just cut her off. <laughs> I'm not interested in your biography. I'm simply asking how this, I'm trying to see how this works. Yeah, that's not a problem, says Heather. I, I really think that that was, I was really on the edge of my seat. I want to hear the rest of that. And... And yeah, that's probably why she got cut off. Uh, isn't that amazing? It was the court reporter that had to cut her off. And, you know, I get random ideas that, that pop into my head. And uh, I talked a little bit about that in that first say up video I did. Because the idea to define do, the word do, as direct observation just flew into my head out of nowhere and now the idea flies into my head that uh, I wonder if I wonder if this was a cue or a clue or a message from the court reporter to the judge because she She's the one that's jumping in here and cutting Heather off. And then and then the judge says, yeah, let's just cut her off. Like, like he's replying to a question, should, should we cut her off? Yeah, let's just cut her off. You know, it, we're, we're talking about what, what meaning has been assigned to all of these 
alphabetical characters that, that are on the page in front of us. And we've seen how their meaning can change so drastically depending upon which dictionary, who you're talking to. Uh, and it, by the time you multiply that out by how many words we use in the English language that have multiple definitions like that, it, it really, to, <laughs> to think that you've got an accurate uh, communication going on with another being is, is really insanity at that point. So why is the judge answering a question here? Yeah, let's just cut her off. It makes me wonder, was the court reporter uh, part of part of some sort of uh, hmm briefing before this hearing even started? Hmm. I don't know, but that's just the random idea that pops into my head right there. Is there communication going on between the judge and the reporter that we're not aware of? Heather says, yeah, not a problem. Judge says, okay, so, and Heather cuts him off. It used to be one way, and now I'm putting all my intent that it is another way. Judge says, in your world, in your idea of how this works, because you think there is no U.S., and I think there is, so in your, in your declaration and your position, in your theory, or whatever you want to call it, if someone were to rob a bank, okay, could they be prosecuted in court by a prosecutor like these young ladies or by a court like myself or Judge Varlin? Heather says, if there is authority to do so, then of course. The judge asks, is there authority? I thought you said there was no such authority. Heather said, you gave me a hypothetical. Judge says, right. <laughs> I gave you another hypothetical answer, Heather continues. Or excuse me, the appropriate hypothetical answer was, if there is authority and jurisdiction. Judge says, but in your position, there is no such in this court. Heather says, this state of current events, judge says, right. Heather continues, is essentially all I did was I closed and terminated the fraud. This court used to be operating in a fraud, okay? It still is until we go in and actually clean things up. It's not, I get what everyone's intents and hearts are set to, and I agree with you. That was why things could be taken down. The only thing I took down was a corporate fraud that was occurring called the United States. It was a corporate fraud, that's it. C. Clifford says, in the name of trying not to commit more fraud, I'll take it your position then is, if someone robs a bank today and they come in here, I should just tell them I have no authority over them, I don't exist, and they should just go home? Heather says, I'm not going to give you any legal advice of how you should conduct your affairs today. <laughs> I mean, that would be the ultimate result of what you're proposing, says the judge. Heather says, at this point, because of where you sit and where I get, I get where you believe you sit, and I get where everyone actually has that. Right now, this court is not operating lawfully. You are not operating lawfully if you don't have proof of your authority and jurisdiction. I'm not consenting to you having authority and jurisdiction over me. I'm not an employee of a defunct, terminated corporation. I am not a citizen of a defunct corporation. Wow! Bam! Judge says, all right. Heather continues, but I am here, you are here, and we're all talking underneath in our own full responsibility. There's, there it is again. 
We're all here in our own full responsibility. This is what the restructure is about. This is what the statement is for, is all these funds go to the restructure. Judge says, I was hoping that at some point in our discussion, you could see the fallacy in your argument, or at least your supporters could. Again, he's trying to define it as an argument. <clears throat> Heather says it's not an argument, it's a declaration. Heather says, well, I hope you see, I hope that you see the fallacy in your hypothetical. Judge says, but that is the long and short of your proposition. <clears throat> now, now he's labeling it a proposition that people could just go out today and commit any kind of crimes and there would be no way to prosecute them or to bring them to justice because by virtue of your foreclosure in your own argument, again, he's calling it an argument again, by virtue of that, we have no longer have any authority. We don't exist legally and we could do nothing with them. Heather says, legally, no, nobody. Judge cuts her off. So that's my point. Nobody legally exists, Heather continues. That's my point. We would have anarchy, Heather says. In that commercial structure anymore, no. So let's, let's just pull out Heather's uninterrupted reply. Legally, no. Nobody. Nobody legally exists in that commercial structure anymore, no. Judge continues, the essence for this, if I understand it, is that you contend that the United States was formerly declared a corporation. Heather says, formerly, question mark? It's Anne-Marie Svalto and Cynthia Davidson said that, and the alleged court clerk's record, says it says the USA is the plaintiff. I'm just asking for proof of the existence of the plaintiff. Wow, bam! Judge says, I didn't ask about that. I'll just read your own writing. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Heather's beautiful. It's not a corporation anymore. It is. It was cited in the United States Code. I gave you that. Judge says, you said the United States was formerly declared a corporation at 18 U.S.C. section 3002, subsection 15. Other says, that was only the most recent citing of, Judge cuts her off. That's the only thing you wrote, correct? Other says, uh-huh. Judge says, you understand, don't you? that that site is just a definitional site under the Federal Debt Collection Procedure Act, don't you? Heather replies, I'm very aware of the United States being a corporation after working at the highest levels of bank trade and finance, and that it is actually a corporation that had been operating in fraud. Judge says, no ma'am, it is not. And your only reference to it does not even say that, does it? Heather says, I would be happy because this is a bankrupt, this was a bankrupt corporation. I actually went in and cleaned up the bankruptcy and it was satisfied. So as far as this is all banking. Judge says, you went in and cleaned. Heather says, this is all law. Judge replies, okay. Heather says, you know, I am completely aware that yourself and others are not aware of the actual current law. I get that. Judge says, well, in your mind, I appreciate that you feel that way. What I'm asking you is, the legal site that you filed doesn't support what you claim, correct? Heather says, how does it not support? It was a corporation operating under the guise of government, and it was a bankrupt corporation. Judge says, it doesn't say that in 18 U.S.C. 3002 subsection 15, does it? That was for, that's for the Fair Debt and Practices Act, correct? Judge says, yeah. 
That is part of the fraud that was committed under the corporation operating under the guise of government. All we did was correct it. At this point, we do move forward with a true government at this point. This government that we all believe in, I believe in too. I do not believe in the... Judge cuts her off. Does it have judges? Heather says, in a fraudulent... Judge cuts her off. Does your government have judges? Heather says, my government doesn't. I... Right now, I do not have subscribed to any corporate government. No. All right. So just Heather cuts him off. However, as far as we're not going to be creating criminals like we have been to be able to feed into the prison systems, which are all money based. Bam. Wow. There are tons of undercover agents that I even met met with while I was in there who have been gathering evidence for over the last five years, as well as marshals that were working as marshals while I was there. This is all stuff that's going to be coming out. I completely respect you, Anne Marie Svalto and Cynthia Davidson, Parker Still, Randy Bean, Steve and Francis, everyone that's in this courtroom. I respect you all. I'm here because I spent the last 20 years working with those inside the industries to clean this up. I'm saying, yes, we can move forward. Yes, we can have court. We can have different systems, but we are not answering to a banking entity into the banking families. That's what I'm saying. It's slavery via monetary instruments, and that's the fraud that was stopped. Bam! Wow! That's amazing. She is on a roll. Court says, and I guess the long and short of it is simply just because you say it so doesn't make it so. You know, this is probably a good place to cut it off for now. We are about 40 minutes into it. Wow. I'm just going to I'm just going to leave with with Heather's vibration here what she's saying lines 20 through 24 cuz this this is important. This is this is unifying here. I'm saying yes, we can move forward. Yes, we can have court. We can have different systems, but we are not answering to a banking entity into the banking families. That's what I'm saying. It's slavery via monetary instruments. And that's the fraud that was stopped. Wow. Wow, that's potent. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I love you guys a lot. Peace out.